My name is Trevor Branch. I am an assistant professor at the School of Aquatic and Fishery Sciences, University of Washington. And I'm going to talk this morning about catch shares and what expectations you might have from other fisheries, what we've seen in other fisheries. So just a brief reminder, catch shares are fisheries where the total allowable catch, or the TAC, is divided up amongst individuals or sometimes companies or even communities. And those entities can choose when and where to catch their individual quota. In most cases, the individual quota can be sold or leased, which gives a lot of flexibility. And some other names for catch shares are individual fishing quotas, sector management, individual transferable quotas, um, or even cooperatives. Typically what you see in catch shares is that the fishery itself increases its profitability. And that's a result of being able to time market prices better. You can choose when and where to fish. Um, sometimes also you can deliver more valuable products such as fresh fish instead of frozen fish if you can fish for longer during the year. Usually what happens is those individual quotas become quite valuable. If you can sell them, they uh, gain value and it becomes a privilege um, that you can make money off of. Another result from catches is that yes you have more flexibility if you're in the fishery but on the other hand it becomes much more costly to enter the fishery because you have to buy quota from somebody else to be able to fish or lease quota from somebody else. Usually what we find in catches is relatively small ecological outcomes, in other words, that there is a catch share or isn't a catch share doesn't have much impact on the status of the stock, on the status of other fisheries um, nearby or um, other species in the ecosystem. There can be some, but usually they're relatively small compared to the economic and social impacts. Often what you find though is quite major social change. What you see is a concentration of quota in the hands of fewer people or companies. You might see regional shifts in who owns quota. Um, you might see that crew members get paid a different amount or are paid in a different way and other types of social change. One of the biggest effects of catches is that the number of vessels fishing in that particular fleet declines, sometimes quite dramatically. This plot shows the results of 20 uh, catch share fisheries based on published studies and what you see is that in every case the number of vessels declined sometimes dramatically. Now multi-species fisheries offer a special case of catch share fisheries. In this case there is usually a cap on catch set for all major species in the fishery that are caught and the problem here is that some species might be more constraining than others. As a result of that, it can be quite difficult to match the catches to your individual quota holdings, even if you're allowed to transfer quota and lease from somebody else to match it when you go over and lease your quota out when you have quota remaining. Still, catch shares are definitely more flexible than most other methods of ensuring that caps on catches are met in a multi-species fishery setting. One of the typical results that we expect from catch air fisheries is illustrated by this plot. It's a little complex, so I'll go through it bit by bit. What I'm showing you here is how many species or stocks um, have their catches close to the total allowable catch, or the TAC. In other words, if the catch to TAC is bigger than one, they went over the allowable catch. If the catch to TAC is smaller than one, they went under the allowable catch. And if the catch attack is very small, they basically didn't catch anything and they left a lot of fish in the water. And what we expect to see is something that looks like this. The, these particular data from the British Columbia groundfish fishery. The top panel is before catch shares. And what you see there is quite a few species that were over the total allowable catch, over the tack, and um, lots of species under the tack. Once catch shares came into place, what you see is that the number of species that went over the tack was greatly reduced, um, and the number that were under the tack, most of those tend to cluster 
close to the tack. In other words, after catches, the flexibility allowed those that were fishing to almost completely catch the allowable catch without exceeding it too often. How do they do this? Well, one of the ways they do this is by choosing when, where, and how to fish. In other words, by choosing the gear, the area, and the season of fishing, they can very often predict what kinds of species mixtures you'd find. So these are examples of 10 different trawls that were conducted in the British Columbia groundfish fishery in three different locations. So in location A, which is the left-hand set of panels, very predictably they caught long spine thorny head with smaller amounts of short spine thorny head, sablefish and dover sole. And anyone who fishes in the fishery knows that these are deep water targeted toes at the what's called the DTS complex, the dover, head, dover thorny head and sablefish complex. On the other hand, when they went fishing in location B, they caught a broad range of different species, sometimes lots of arrowtooth flounder, sometimes spiny dogfish, sometimes silver grey rockfish, doversole or lingcod, with a scattering of quite a few other different species. So this would be a good place to go fishing if you were trying to catch a range of different species um, that you had quota for uh, in, that, in those categories. In location C, on the other hand, it's primarily a rock sole dominated location. So if you go fishing there, you're pretty much guaranteed to catch rock sole and very little else. Yes, occasionally you might catch some big skate or arrowtooth flounder or lingcod, but mostly what you're catching there is rock sole. So the flexibility that catch shares allow is that you can choose to go and fish in places in order to catch exactly the species mixture that you want to catch. One of the consequences of this flexibility is that if there are species you shouldn't be catching, and in British Columbia the example was yellow eye rockfish, where they introduced a big cap on yellow eye catches that was much lower than before, starting in 1997. And what happened here was that even though small catches, that's the top panel, even though small catches were still caught of yellow eye rockfish in all the years afterwards, the bigger catches, those greater than 15 kilograms, and especially the very large <coughs> catches, declined dramatically. In other words, what happened was the skippers avoided areas where they might think yellow eye could be caught, and this resulted in a great decline in how many yellow eye were caught. Another consequence of catches, depending how you set up the program, may be a decline in the number of fish that are discarded. So here what I'm showing you is for all the same species that are caught in the US West Coast ground fish fishery and the British Columbia ground fish fishery in the same year, uh, how many were discarded? Just the pure fraction of whatever was caught that was thrown back overboard. And what you see is that in British Columbia in that year when catch shares were in place, the discard rates were lower for almost all of the species than they were in the West Coast. West, the West Coast at that time was dominated by a trip limit system where you could go out fishing and if you exceeded the allowable limit for that trip or that month, you were required to discard and it's perhaps not surprising that discard rates were substantially higher. So in summary, what we can expect to see in the West Coast groundfish fishery <coughs> is that the fleet size declines, that catches are generally kept below the TACs but might be closer to the allowable catches than before, um, strong avoidance of places which uh, might contain species with very low quota, the constraining species or overfish species, and hopefully lower discard, lower discard rates than before. Thanks very much for your time. It's been a pleasure to talk.